Good evening and welcome. Valued viewers, do you know what one of the main reasons is that the planned overthrow of the Syrian government has failed so far? Whereas the one in Ukraine was successful, that's right, because there is no oligarchy in Syria. You've surely also asked yourself who these billionaires and enterprising giants are who are so often mentioned in the news coverage concerning Ukraine. One of them was even elected to the office of president end of May 2014. What exactly is oligarchy? Just as the word's origin indicates, oligarchy means the few rulers of the country. The biggest banks of Ukraine belong to them. Half of the gross national product, that is $67 billion, is in the hands of about 50 of this oligarchy. They control the food production industry as well as the natural resources like steel, coal, electricity and natural gas. All of the major news agencies and media also belong to them. With these, they influence the public opinion in the country. They exhort political influence and join sides with those who are most useful to their power empire. Where does this oligarchy originate? In the 1990s, in the former Soviet republics, mostly in Russia and Ukraine, they came onto the scene, well-connected business people, beginning with next to no starting capital, but who rapidly became extremely wealthy, mostly through black market activities and corruption. Why is it that they now have a marriage of convenience, so to speak, with the West? The West saw its expansionist plans for NATO and the EU threatened as the former President Yanukovych put off signing the associations agreement with the European Union. At the same time, the so-called Maidan protest began in Kiev, which originally was a protest against the illegal and corrupt schemes of the oligarchy. What could be more obvious than that the West allied itself with the oligarchy in order to take advantage of the demonstration in Kiev for their common interests? This marriage of convenience between the oligarchy and the West revealed itself in the following ways. To mention just a few of them. Government opposition leaders like Vitaly Klitschko mixed with the demonstrators. At the same time, the media, controlled by the oligarchy, began to report positively of the demonstration and negatively about Yanukovych's government. Shortly after this, violent factions were sent in to infiltrate and mix with the demonstrators. Of course, this was financed well by the oligarchy. For example, radical right-wing groups who, through massive terrorist activities, managed to bring on the overthrow of Yanukovych's government. A temporary interim government was appointed, about whom even the major Frankfurt newspaper FAZ commented, Extremists, technocrats, oligarchy, the members of Ukraine's interim government worked their way up in and through corrupt systems. Immediately following this, the oligarchy was established in important key political positions. Others were introduced into political offices. And last but not least, a member of the oligarchy, Poroshenko, was elected president. Together with others of the oligarchy, he attacks the separatists and now also civilians in the eastern regions of the country relentlessly and with extreme brutality. One thing is clear, this convenient alliance of oligarchy with the West has nothing to do with democracy or with the interests or will of the people, but alone with the interests of the few rulers. Observe the situation in light of this yourself and form your own opinions. Please make a point of helping us spread this information in order to wake other people up. Thanks for joining us and until next time, goodbye.